Halloween, everybody. It's Halloween weekend. We made it. We're halfway through the semester. Feeling spooky. Feeling scary. Audios, visuals are working. We're all systems are working. Right and fast. Let's go ahead and mute that. <laughs> uh, how's it sad? Is it good music? Is it spooky music? Putting it down there. Just a little hum. Spooky season. Has everybody had a good week? The weather's beautiful. I hope, uh, I hope it stays like this for all the trick-or-treaters. Um, is that probably like tonight? People probably trick-or-treating tonight or maybe Sunday. Is it Sunday probably people are going to do? I don't know. I don't know if enough uh, uh, trick-or-treaters in my life to uh, let me know what the plan is. But we have our decorations up. We got our color-changing light bulb outside our house. It's all about lighting is uh, very important. Probably Sunday. Yeah, I guess the 31st itself is probably the day people are going to do. But a Sunday for trick-or-treating is very nice, you know? Like, everybody, it's a school night, so people are able to, uh... Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. So maybe, like, the parties are on Friday, and then more trick-or-treating on, like, the on the weekend on Sunday and stuff. It makes it a school night, so kids are back in by a reasonable time. Lights are back out. So I'm... You can probably tell I'm in, like, a spooky season mood. So I was thinking we just, like open up a WebXR scene, start writing some code, and kind of see where it takes us with uh, doing something maybe thematically match in the background that's behind me here. Been a huge week of uh, VR news, you know, so we're not going to talk about that that long, but pretty exciting to see that it seems like it's all happening. Um, so some good news for WebXR, I thought, this week that it's going to kind of fit into the fold a little bit better and um yeah it's kind of exciting where that's all going so um yeah let's uh, let's get to it let's uh let's make some stuff so those of you who have hung out with me here on twitch before probably recognize glitch glitch.com is where we're going to be doing our coding today because it's just super easy to code in public eye um so we'll start up a project um i to do this from scratch do this from scratch. No, let's do the, uh, let's use that A-frame starter project. Save us some time. So right now I'm looking for just my little starter base code here. A-frame. <laughs> is Halloween the holiday that has the clear best holiday song? Like, there's one number one Halloween song in my mind. Like, you know, the winter holidays, there's like for each one of them a lot of songs. For like, there's some holidays that like don't really have a song that's associated with them. Like, I don't know, like, what an Easter. Uh, popular Easter song is or something, but like, I, I think Monster Mash, Runaway, most prominent Halloween song. Maybe you got your Thriller, if you consider Thriller to be a Halloween song. You know, the Vincent Price part really makes it feel that way. But. Okay, so here's our A-frame starter scene. Ooh, ooh. 3D in the browser, pretty cool. Uh, so we'll re remix that. And then get a little inspiration uh, via Sketchfab. Ooh, yeah, that is what I was just humming. I was just doing This Is Halloween and then started talking about how Monster Mash is the classic. But yeah, This Is Halloween is pretty good. Is that like a, is that Danny Elfman? Is that, is that, who wrote that? There, yeah, Halloween 
uh, music really goes off compared to other ho other holidays. Mm. Oh man, there's so much good um, Halloween 3D art on here too. Look at this guy. This is like a 3D scan. Cool. I've always loved the name of Danny Elfman's one of those guys who's like in a uh, you know like real band and then kind of moves over to do more like other entertainment music right like where he's more prominent but i've always loved his his band name uh, oingo boingo is just a fantastic fantastic band name yeah yeah that's an awesome scan wow i don't know how they got the inside of that as well as they did so let's see what the uh usage right on this is okay attribution that's cool i'm gonna open up a little notepad file keep track of who we need to credit here. Um. Oh, I thought it would generate your attribution for you. Where do you do that? Um. Oh, yeah, when you download it. Copy those credits. Get a little file going here. So I will download that model. Do I trust the GLTF convert from Sketchfab? Hmm, let's see. Anybody have good Halloween costume ideas this year? I spent like an hour trying to figure out a good costume idea for my friend the other day. I don't know that we really came away with anything that good. So I'm unzipping, uh, you can't see this on my screen because I'm only sharing my browser, but I'm unzipping that thing we just downloaded. Yeah, let's throw that all open up 3JS editor. 3JS.org slash editor. Editor. Oh, that's a, that's a really good costume. Um, Toad is, there's like lots of good sounds you get to make throughout the night. You can just like uh, use all the sounds he makes in Mario Kart. Pretty cool. I feel like that hat would be a lot of fun to make too. Um, cool, I'll drop this in here so we can see what it looks like in uh, WebGL. Why don't you want to open? Okay, let's crack this up. Oh, this is taking me a minute. Man. Cool. 
Okay, so let's go to our A-frame. Uh, docs here and remind ourselves how to insert a GLTF model. So we gotta use our asset manager. Which, huh, they don't have an asset manager in the uh, Hello World. It goes up in, uh, right after the scene, I think. Call that check. Actually, I'm gonna totally forget what that is. Lantern. Um, and then like, I will drop my jack-o'-lantern into assets, get a link for it, make that the source. What does GLB stand for? That's a really good question. Um, I don't think I know the beginning. Um, one of the students over in VR just the other day kind of Put together that the B is for binary, and there's a so there's like these two really web optimized 3D model formats. There's probably more, but these are two that are really commonly used. They were like brought out by Chronos Group um, and have been open source since their release, um, so they're pretty widely used. And um, the one of them is called GLTF, which is like a text format, is what the TF stands for. And then B is a uh, binary in GLB, so it's all one file. Uh, is my understanding of that? Uh, not really like a uh, file extension export, but uh, GL transmission format. It's not text format. Go figure. Uh, GL is like um, a lot of graphics like libraries uh, will end in GL. So like. WebGL is the one they're making reference to, probably. It's like the graphics renderer for the web. Um, and I used to say it's for anything 3D on the web, but my understanding is now that like actually almost everything is being rendered by WebGL. Um, like even if it's a 2D like environment or something, it's running through WebGL uh, within. And there's like a browser distinction. Like I think as of like a year ago, maybe one of the major browsers didn't use WebGL, it used something else. but. Um, there's also like a new web renderer that's coming out slowly um, called WebGPU that in my understanding runs more like how rendering works within a, um, within a game engine uh, rather than kind of WebGL is this merger kind of transitionary renderer. So it's my understanding. It's a really interesting topic. Like I, that's a, I would love to have an expert just do an entire stream on like rendering engines. Pretty cool. Uh, I think it's kind of beneath the surface of our experience on the web a lot of the time. Um, how much of that did I get right? Pretty good amount. Is intended to be a streamlined, interoperable format for the delivery of 3D assets while minimizing file size and runtime by apps. I think that is probably the goal of most 3D file formats. But, um, pretty cool. Kronos is red. I'm a uh, pretty big fan. Um, okay, back to this. Okay, let's see if we can get our jack o' lantern to render into the scene here. I'll put it where the box is, maybe. Uh, so we got a GLTF. So just a reminder for those of you who haven't done a lot of like. HTML markdown 3D stuff with us. Um, so we got like our entity here. It means it's an object in the scene. Um, it's a like a thing, a noun. I like to think of it like using that analogy. So that's our noun. And then we've got these components. So this GLTF model is a component. And like depending on like what your preferred software environment is, you might think of that as a modifier. Like in um, like. I guess in Blender and some other places, it's like probably better described as a modifier. Um, but component within an ECS system, an entity component system. Um, and in this case, we're modifying that entity, which is just like a naked noun. It's just like a stand-in, like it's gonna be a thing. Um, 
we're modifying it to be a GLTF model. Um, so we're going to call and the natural question that the browser asks us is, um, okay, like you want it to be a GLT GLTF model, but what do you want it to be? And so we'll say hash lantern and at runtime, it's going to say like, oh, what is a lantern? That's like a word I don't know, but it, we taught it that word up here. So lantern means this model. So we'll throw that in there now, hopefully. See, uh, let's grab the position from here. Uh, I hate controls. I've been <laughs> working in GitHub too much. I just hate control S. Um, I don't really like doing that as the like, switching between windows. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's there in me. Um, it's also, as I looked at that model, maybe not very web optimized. Um, so let's These are adorable. Maybe see one they like. It's pretty cool. Oh, cool model, but I'm not gonna pay for it right now. Others should. I will not. curious how these download are these do we just get this as like a single okay I gotta find out if we get these as like 10 different models it's gonna be very cool yeah look at him look how worried this guy is like, oh no it's Halloween he's excited about it though he is just tired I think and she's all pumped for uh Halloween. okay let's download that pretty bad for us, but you can convert it. Do we have Blender running on here? Uh, let's copy those credits from our little doc. And opening this up. Apologies for the fact that you can't see me extract these files. Okay, let's do a little blender work. I'm gonna switch my screen here. This is Blenderween. This is Blenderween. Uh, open source. Blenderween. Uh, so that's an FBX we just brought in, I think.
download stylized pumpkins sources. What is this? So file import. Oh man, I'm really digging in my uh, files here. Downloads. Dangerous of jumping on somebody else's PC and trying to do stuff. I don't know where these live. Um, Just like these carved and uncarved versions, it's pretty neat. Um, how do I want to do this? I guess I could. Um, guess I could. Uh, let's export these as 10 different files. Yeah, we're pogging. We're pogging. Okay, here we go. Uh, file, export, GLB. Uh, make a little document. I don't know. Blender exports. Ooh, somebody's got a Blender export file going already. Pumpkins. Sorry, you can't see my file manager right now, but um, we'll call that pumpkins. We'll call this guy like pumpkin one carved. We'll export. And I guess I should probably check that that actually works in 3JS before I go crazy exporting the other nine of these. So I'm a pro now. Check this out. I'm switching switching media sources all over the place. Okay. Um, 3JS editor. I'm just gonna open a new one. It's a cool thing about 3JS editor. You can like leave. Yeah, I'm a, I'm an actual professional. Um, you can like leave 3JS editor. Uh, I close the tab, and it, when you open it back up, it, if you haven't cleared your cache, it'll remember the scene you have there, which is pretty rad. Pretty useful. Okay. Professional streamer, Colin Keenan. Oh, weird. Yeah, 3JS, it totally opened that um, full set of pumpkins. Yeah, that's cool. Running the browser. They're huge. Um, let's add file. I have to imagine these are going to work separate, but I guess they have been passed through Blender, so there's a chance I broke them. Oh, what do I want to call? Where do I want to go for this? Um, documents, right? Documents, Blender exports, <laughs> pumpkin one carved. Hey, look at that friendly little fella. Okay, let's switch back to Blender and do the rest of this exporting. Here. <laughs> Halloween even has its own holiday greeting. Like you're gonna say happy Halloween. You're not gonna say like merry Halloween. You're gonna say happy Halloween which a lot of holidays don't have. Pretty huge development. What holidays don't have like a greeting, like a way that you're, like the thing that's definitely going on the holiday card, you know? Probably most of them. 
Okay, we'll call this pumpkin one uncarved. <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to say boo. You're supposed to walk up behind people and just go like, hey, boo. Okay, here we got pumpkin two uncarved. Yeah, Pi Day does need like a its own thing, like. Hi, how you doing there? Call this pumpkin two carved. And I am getting an idea of what we want to do with these pumpkins. I think I'm formulating a master plan here. Have y'all seen Dune yet? Highly suggest. I loved it. Export this. We'll call this pumpkin three carved. If you're into VFX, um, like I kind of just love Denis Villeneuve. Like, I. Each of his last couple movies have been awesome. Um, I loved Arrival. Um, Blade Runner 2049 was pretty good. Uh, this reminded me a lot of Blade Runner um, in terms, like, like cinematically and uh, kind of in terms of some of the themes that it seems like he introduced uh, that were or weren't in the book as much. Um, but, like, just the whole look of stuff, the way he plays with, like, matte, non bright colors is just like amazing like how he makes like gray pop against brown like i don't know any other director who does that um, pumpkin three uncarved like it really reminded me of a kubrick movie which is like probably the like one of the biggest compliments i can give something Yeah, like, you know, Blade Runner, I think everybody uh, pointed out how he was playing with that recurring color thing with, like, the, the pinks and the blues. And there's obviously, like, the famous photos of Ryan Gosling looking awesome with, like, the two colors across his face and everything. Like, um, they definitely, that movie's about lighting, like, cinematically. And um, this was, like, the same but different. <laughs> Just, like, there's no bright color in the entire movie. Um like that I can remember, like the blue of the eyes in those scenes just totally pops and it's amazing. Talking about Timothy Chalamet instead of paying attention to what I'm doing. Here we go. Okay. Pumpkin four carved. So we got four of them. I don't know if we need five, actually. Do I like this last face? Oh, I do. What a jolly fellow. OK. Anybody here into uh, like scary games? I'm not really. I don't really like horror games that much, but it seems like tonight is like a great night to play like a spooky game. I 
I haven't played that um the multiplayer uh like haunted house game. Uh yeah, not scary. Yeah, I, I play like I play kind of baby games to be honest. <laughs> A lot of I either play open world games, uh or I play um like very Nintendo bright color kind of games. But um kind of tempted i i kind of want to revisit uh phantasm i think that's what it's called um i played it very early like it might even have been the beta or something um i thought it was fine but um when i saw a bunch of people streaming it recently it looks like they've added a lot to it um so i might revisit that one okay so let's uh i think that's the end of those exports I've got pumpkin one card. Pump okay, I'll actually I'll share what I've been doing here. Um, boom. Okay, this is what I just exported. Pumpkin one carved. Pumpkin one uncarved. Pumpkin two carved. Two uncarved, three carved, three uncarved, four carved, four uncarved, five carved, five uncarved. Been working. I just made ten NFTs, everybody. Um, cool. So we'll now get those ten models imported. And what was the name of that other one that I want to switch back to? Oh, and I'll show, this is the little notepad I'm keeping um, of who we have to credit here. This is Strawberry Cheetah, is the artist um, of these pumpkins, so we'll make sure to drop that in there. Um, I have lost my, uh, I'm gonna close up some stuff. I don't need Blender open anymore. Freaky. There we go. I don't know why I'm not finding my. Uh, I think I just got close enough stuff to uh, bring this back up. Remember when I was talking about being a pro? Comparison. It was actually that I just had so many things open that it was coming off of OBS's list. Um, I, think I need to resize my window. Okay, cool. Let's uh, throw these into our source. So I think what we want to make, I was thinking about like, you have the five pumpkins, like uncarved. Maybe we'll make like a spooky seat around them or something. And then when you hover, or we should probably make it click too, because there's no hover on mobile. But when you hover over or click them, it switch to the carved version. Maybe we can do some more stuff with that after. But they should yeah, be a fun little illusion. If you put a little smoke blowing around and stuff, it'll look cool, some light. Um, and those, they are um, super efficient models. Like they're all like 50 kilobytes or something. So we'll have not used like any of our kind of memory budget, video memory budget to do that. So we can kind of use that budget on smoke and mirrors. So, okay, so I got, I'm gonna delete this uh, pumpkin so it doesn't confuse me. Then I'm gonna drop all of our carved and uncarved pumpkins in here.
So my wife bought way too much Halloween candy, I think. Um, or I'm just trying to justify the fact that I've been eating all the Halloween candy. And uh, so I've been snacking on it through the week. So I think I got a little bit of a, uh, a candy rankings going. Uh, I think I'm realizing I'm really into the, yeah, it's <laughs> it's not really a problem. I'm, I'm creating the framing of a problem so I can introduce my solution of eating all the candy. Um, but I'm really into like the malted sugar stuff. So like been eating a lot of Whoppers. Um, been doing a lot of Heath bars, like the kind of toffee thing. Um, what else have I been into this week? To it. My Dr. Naran, if my dentist is watching the stream, Dr. Naran, plug your ears. I've been having a lot of the milk duds too, which are very bad for your teeth. You rip a crown right off with those. Sour Patch Kids, very solid. We have uh, sour gummy worms in our big bin, so I've been kind of snacking those too. If I was doing a rankings of good candies to eat so much of that you now hate them um, or to like get sick on them and then not like them anymore, Sour Patch Kids would be number one. I feel like you could eat a lot of Sour Patch Kids and then <laughs> not want any more Sour Patch Kids. Okay, carved one, carved two, carved three, carved four, and carved five. Uncarved one. Uncarved two. Uncarved three. Uncarved four and uncarved five. Let's go grab the links for those. One uncarved. Oh, actually, we did carved first, and then on my list, it'll help me keep track of it. Carved one is at this link. This is the kind of thing that I just need to keep my eyes glued to the screen or else I will lose focus on where I'm at. Come from two carved. Ooh, I'm having that experience where you look at a word long enough and it doesn't look like it's right with the word carved. Very weird looking word. Come from three carved. Pumpkin four carved. Five carved. One uncarved. Two uncarved. Three uncarved. Four uncarved. Last one. Five uncarved. Whew. Okay. Very sad that I feel proud of myself for keeping focus on that for like 60 seconds. <laughs> but uh, let's throw carved one in here. It's a test. So we had that lantern tag that wasn't working. Uh, we'll throw it in there and I'll just throw it at zero, zero, zero. And I think it's going to be, I think the scale is going to be really high based on what we saw in the, <laughs> in the uh, preview. So uh, refresh this. Hey, <clears throat> look at that guy. All 3D. He's in a very weird spot, but he's there. Uh, I kind of don't want to mess with the camera too much, so let's move him and figure out what like a good spot is for this. Uh, 
Oh, his origin's not. I didn't re-origin these. I didn't give them a zero 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 origin, which I probably should have done in Blender, but we can adjust for it. It's cool. Um, let's try making that like fifth of the scale. And then So like a fifth is good. That was really good. <clears throat> the fact that it's rendering in the scene is like very is a really good sign. That's where I can just lose like an hour is if just models won't load in, um, won't render for whatever reason. I've had I've just thrown so much time at that component and trying to get GLTF model working. So good to see. Uh, it looked like one fifth scale was the move. Um, I think it might be time to get rid of this box. The annoying thing about things not being origined at zero is not um, it's not the fact that they'll you have to move their position relative to it their new origin now or their like non-zeroed out origin it's that when you rotate things it orbits around that non-zero or origin so like you'll have something in the spot you want and then you go to rotate it and you've like it's basically orbiting its origin does that make sense uh, rather than orbiting on its origin that is at the center of mass of the object. So it acts like a planet, uh, or it acts like a moon rather than a planet, sort of. Um, looks like the rotation is like not minus 90 degrees in the Y. Um, so equals zero minus 90 zero oh and I forgot I didn't grab its position okay so that's good and they were all facing the same way in blender so that rotation should work for all of them but there and it also needs to come up a little Position 0 0.15, uh, sniff that. Oh, actually, no, 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 we can use our, our little trick. So I'll copy that to clipboard. And This is a professional developer move. I'll have you know. Um, and it didn't work. <laughs> really? I thought the. Oh, I've got two positions, so it's going to use the one that's earlier in the stream. Makes sense. Okay. Professional. And. I almost feel like it could be bigger now. Uh, let's get, I think the time has come to lose our training reels, get rid of this stuff.
find the right scale here. I know, what do you think? Right scale? I'm trying to remember that there's gotta be like five across our view here. So like one, two, three, four, five kind of tracks, yeah? Okay. Let's uh use that same move and got that copy to my clipboard. Scale 0.5 around, rotation stays the same, position looks right. Uh, let's give it a name, let's call it ID equals carved one. Okay, ID Patricia Pumpkin 1, let's call it Pumpkin 1, Patricia, thanks for the mud, you now have to name all five of these, so you've gotten yourself into a predicament. Looks good to me. And we can get rid of the box. We can get rid of the sphere. Get rid of the cylinder. We'll keep the plane because it's kind of grounding us. Pun intended. Um, let's do the click elements now. Um, So this uses cursor. Um, so let's read about, let's talk about ray casting. Let's talk about ray casting. Let's get serious here. Um, cursor component provides hover and click states for interaction on top of the ray caster component. Uh, the cursor component can be used for both gaze based and controller based interactions, but the appearance needs to be configured based on the use case. So the A cursor primitive, that's a, uh, open up another tab here, provides a default reticle appearance for a gaze-based cursor. I don't love gaze-based interaction. It always feels wonky to me. Like I, I see why it's necessary, especially without hand tracking or keyboard mouse. I don't really like gaze-based stuff anymore. Um, laser controls component is cursor for all, okay. I'm gonna steal code for myself. We um, we just rolled out a pretty cool um, educational program uh, that I'll show off here in a second. That makes heavy use of the Raycaster component. So. Cursor goes in the scene. Oh, 
actually, you know what? There's a better place for me to grab this from because we have been developing this in Glitch. And I can use the uh, hosted versions of these libraries rather than the local ones that I use in GitHub. It'll really confuse me and make me have to do a bunch more. Um, I actually kind of forget what this one does too. doesn't have click events. One hour point, let's do a little stretch. Pay no attention to the beautiful demo on the screen. <laughs> Stealing code from another project. Um, are using 1.2, that's good. Uh, let's grab this event set. Um, this is like an event system. So it lets you, um, thank you. Yeah, there's an updated version of this too. Um, event set lets you basically create like click events, like uh, stand in, like um, Got like switches, right? Imagine a board of switches. These are all things users can do with their mouse and their keyboard. And then there's like something you're trying to actuate. You're just something you gotta like make happen. Uh, this provides you like the string to run between the switch and your intended activity without it being like the default came out of the packaging string, make your own. It's a bad analogy, but pretend it was good. Um, Throw this in here up by the scripts. What else do I want from this? Uh, I don't need the layout component. Ooh, we could use layout and make all our pumpkins equidistant using layout. I'm not gonna do that though. It uh, basically lets you organize um, entities into like rows and columns and circles and stuff without having to manually position them. Um, we can think about using it if we want. There's a complication to using it within this context. Um, we'll throw Troika in here. Troika is like a 3D uh, text system that lets you use um, specific fonts because there's only like two fonts built into A-Frame, which is good. They shouldn't have built an entire like word processor into their 3D engine uh, at the start, but Troika is a cool component that lets you, in any web environment, I think, make um, 3D text, not just in A-Frame, but that's an A-Frame specific component for Troika. Um, OK, we'll go back to play tracks if we want that. Um, this basically is. Probably can't hear that, but it has audio reactivity. So we could do something like this with the pumpkins too. Um, it's not what we need right now though. What we need is the ability to click stuff. So go in here, control wells, cursor. Yeah, we did all this via the uh, rig. Okay, so go ahead and oh, that would be cool if you could. Um, yeah, you'd have to get like mic permissions to do like scare reaction reactivity. Be pretty cool though. Uh, our camera is at zero, 1.6 is zero. So 
Um, cool. That didn't break anything. That's good. Uh, now we have a raycaster. So. Um, Oh, I think it also, yeah, it took away the ability to look in all directions, which is kind of good for our purposes. I, I kind of want to keep people pointed forward here. I'm more and more, a lot of the stuff I'm making, I'm not using 360 with an A-frame. Because um, I'm kind of not making it for headsets. Um, so now, I think the important thing about Raycaster here is that we called out this like objects dot mouse so now we're going to class anything as being um, class equals mouse um, in order for it to be clickable. So like, or to be anythingable, to be seen by the raycaster we just built. So a reminder of what a raycaster is. Um, I like to think of a raycaster as the reason that like most early games like trended towards using like for well, not early games. Uh, Raycasters are the reason people get addicted to making first-person shooters in game worlds. Um, because when you click on something in a 3D environment, it's the Raycast, which is what we're building here. The Raycast is like sending a atom into the 3D environment. And it's seeing if it collides with anything, which it has been, uh, whether it collides with anything. Uh, you can add a level of nuance by making it that it has to collide with specific stuff. That's what this class system is. Um, and that's a better system. Because like, then you could make um, an entire environment where only some things are clickable, uh, which is probably more often what you want. And um, yeah, you're just sending, you're sending an atom out into space and see if it hits anything. And there's lots of levels of nuance available to that, but we're just using it at that level. So I would guess that we need to put um, class equals mouse. And what I'm hoping to see here is that when I hover over the pumpkin, Patricia, our friend Patricia, um, the my cursor will go from being the little triangle guy to the hand. So OK. Hey, look at that. Um, Cool. So we can like do stuff via our clicks now. So of course I'm clicking. It doesn't do anything because I haven't told it what to do. But like I could probably F12 and see in the console that click events are happening. So, I guess actually I haven't created a console printout either. So no. But that's great. That's very encouraging. Um, now let's create a. Reaction. So, like, here's an event set that I made. So, like, let's steal it before we edit it. Apologies for using boilerplate code. I just don't. Uh, I just think it streams a little bit better. Oh, and mod, if anybody wants to uh, follow along with the website we're making, it's living right there. Actually, let's um, sorry that link for anyone watching the VOD. Use the second link. Here you go. Let's change the name now so that I don't change it at the end to break all our links. Um, just changed. Gave it a custom name. Um, what was I doing? Do I have, oh, I guess I have to go put that back on my clipboard. Okay, event set. The event is called uh, pumpkin one. Now it's called carve pumpkin one. And now we're going to go change this. Let's change Patricia to her uncarved form. Um, 
Um, so I just had to add the. Ooh. There's an issue. I just switched the model and it jumps position. Kind of bad news. Um, good to know now, though, rather than later. So, just carved one, pumped in one Patricia. Um, yeah, it is tricky. It's tricky. And so, on click, target, pumpkin one, Patricia gets. We could do like a visible, invisible kind of system where we're clicking things into invisibility. And then you could have the uncarved pumpkin with the carved pumpkin within it. And when you make the uncarved pumpkin disappear, presumably the uncarved pumpkin, would, it would look like an animation, like a two, two frame little animation. And these are efficient enough models that it could work. We just got to see if it's gonna if it's gonna look wacky and like if I can't get them perfectly aligned with each other at the beginning, it might look really bad. Um, let's see though. Yeah, something that's cool is that when we looked at that blender, they were in two rows, right? So I guess the way that the carved forms and uncarved forms relate to each other in terms of their position should be the same in each of those five relationships. So if we can get it once, then we could use, just do math which is very scary, very spooky math. Um, OK, event, click, target, pumpkin one, Patricia, animation property, uh, visible, animation two, false. OK, so now if I click this pumpkin, I expect it to disappear. Uh, okay. What's our next step? Like forty five minutes? Let's, uh, Pumpkin one, Patricia, uncarve. Use uncarved one. And it doesn't need the event set, presumably. And then we go in here. Load up that inspector. Do, 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 do. And let's do some real pondering. OK, so these have the same position. Is this just a matter of, I can't really see the rotation. OK, so 2.022, 2.0, yeah, sure, 0.4. Five and negative point seven two four. I'm reading from here. Sorry, I'm just like saying random numbers. Uh, negative seven point two four seems like the only spot where it had to move. Negative oof, was it seven? It's actually seven. Point seven two four. Zero point seven two four. Um. Okay. Not quite right. Oh, uh, and I kind of inverted uh, this relationship between these click events. So, like, it's actually the um, it's the uncarved one that needs to disappear. Uh, 
Um, so pumpkin one, Patricia, we need to name the target, uncarve, switch to false visible. Okay, cool. Um, we could do that for the others. I'm not totally sold on, I wanna get this a little more precise here. So we need that uncarved to move. So we can see here in the editor that the back of the pumpkin looks kind of not good um, when we do this. Um, but oh yeah, that totally gives away the gives away the game. I guess. I scale it like ever so slightly, so it's just slightly bigger. I guess I could do that. 0 0.52, 0 0.52, 0 0.52. Okay, that looks pretty good. I cannot tell there's another pumpkin in there. Then if I click it, I think that's the illusion, probably. Just a slight, um, I grabbed that to my clipboard there. Computer's getting bad. Yeah, I don't know if my web browser needs to be running all these things. this what's this I've been watching somebody play through uh, Kingdom Hearts lately um, and I'm really looking forward to the Nightmare Before Christmas part of that game because I haven't really thought about that game uh, in a long time before recently when somebody I know was playing it and kind of forgot that the boogeyman is in game one um, and I think they include a bunch of the music if I remember correctly, like. What a crazy concept for a movie. What if Halloween had a crush on Christmas? <laughs> it's just like a great pitch <laughs> to give to, give to Tim Burton. Pretty cool. Y'all ever seen those uh, uh, like home movies that um, I forget who shot it. It might be like uh, Lasseter or somebody from Pixar, but um, 
it's somebody from the Cal Arts class, or like that first Cal Arts class, walking around the like building and the lot in uh, that Disney lot in Burbank or wherever that is that Cal Arts was using, um, and just doing like walking in and out of art studios and just like filming people and just seeing what people are up to. And that like Cal Arts class had like this insane cohort of artists and like future directors and stuff. Um, and there's a great spot where they walk into Tim Burton and he's um, like hunched over a drawing table and just like the most Tim Burton you'll ever see him. He's like, uh, I don't know, he looks like he should be in The Cure basically. <laughs> and he's just art kid. It's very, very wholesome, very cute. Um, yeah, that, look that up. That's a great YouTube deep dive. It was home, home videos that people were shooting, early home videos on the Disney lot. Pretty crazy. Um, okay, let's get to this. Let's fire through and make some more of these. Um, I sort of want to make these two belong to one entity, so we'll call this a entity. ID equals Patricia Pumpkin One Group. Like that one. Mod, I hope you're ready. There's going to be a lot of naming coming up here. Um, here we go. Okay. Oh, we could give the position to. Uh, so what, this is like our second, second from the left. So, no, we can call it zero, 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 it doesn't matter. It'll just be a little weird. Um, okay. okay, let's see how much of this we can do purely through code without looking at the editor. Yeah, let's do Fujasitor. And I'll make five of this group. It'll get really mad at me. I'll start throwing errors because I'll be like, you can't, you just can't do that. This won't like that. Oh, maybe it, maybe it won't be mad. This is going to be really funny. Let's see if this works. Yeah, see, so when I click it now, I only make one of them disappear, so the illusion no longer works. Um, let's go in here. Yeah, why does it? Why is it not mad that I'm naming stuff the same same entity name? That is so weird. I, I'm confused by that. But um, so one point two five about in the X. Um, uh, I don't know if you follow what I'm doing here. I am, uh, I found like the distance where it need how far it needs to go in that X axis, which is like our left to right on the screen from the perspective we're looking. And then I'm going to try just stepping them, the groups, by that amount. So I'm, like, I have one at zero, and it looked like 1.25 to its to our right um, made it look distinct. So I'm going to put one at 1.25, one at 2.5, one at 3.75, and then one at negative 1.25, because we left space to our left. So. Actually, I have changed my mind a little on that. Let's, um, I'm gonna, it's gonna be a little annoying to do, but let's, I'm just gonna get really confused if it goes two, one, three, four, five. So I'm gonna go, Patricia's gonna go on the far left. So uh, minus 1.25, then pumpkin two will be at zero. there. So we 
five. I did it again. <laughs> I hit save. Uh, hey, these should all work. Clip my disappointment. Of course, we only have, I can click any of these and it emits the target that says to get rid of Patricia or the uncarved Patricia, right? It'll get rid of whatever one is first in the order. So I now need to do the re, um, the change. That was encouraging, but I just kind of forgot that that was how that was gonna work. Uh, kind of like our use of screen space, it's good enough. Like we're moving fast here. Uh, okay, so we got pumpkin, Patricia pumpkin one group, which seems to be working fine. So we're gonna, Let's just do a file, new, okay. I love this about the 3JS editor, that it doesn't give you an automatic light. You have to add your own light. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, okay, here we go. Pumpkin 2. Ready, Mod? What's the name of this pumpkin right here on the left? He's definitely, they're definitely one of the two most, like, uh, second one is Perry. <laughs> okay, so... Perry, pumpkin, uh, I'm gonna close this quick, uh, two group, and then we'll need to make this pumpkin two, Perry, obviously named after Perry Cuomo, very, um, Como, Como, how do you say his name, Como, Perry Como, um, very heady reference, Bob, really liking it, well known, holiday singer. Uh, okay, check my work here. Patricia doesn't appear anywhere in this, right? Cool, so that clicking is working. Um, oof, this is not going to work. This is going to totally break. So we switch carved one and uncarved one to carved two and uncarved two. I think this is going to move the position of these a little. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. That's okay. Negative 1.832 is the actual position for this group. whole concept seems to work that was very encouraging um so now i think our camera might be a little high but like we'll mess with that when we do the rest of the scene and i, I want to see if we can by 140 we have five clickable carvable pumpkins it's a goal we set a goal okay 
this terrified pumpkin. Whoa. I keep the mouse is a little differently calibrated than mine. Okay, who's this mod? Who is this pumpkin? Paco. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, let's do it. That's Paco. Uh, pumpkin one, two. Paco, pumpkin three group. Pumpkin three. Carved three. Pumpkin one. Paco uncarved. Sorry, that has to be pumpkin three. Paco uncarved. Uncarved three. I actually forgot to change the name of the event set here. I don't know why it didn't matter. Oh, because it must if you change the target and it belongs to a different entity, it must not create an error. That doesn't seem like it would be very stable. I think that was just luck that it didn't break. Um, pumpkin three, Paco uncarve, uncarve three. Event set carve, pumpkin three. Pumpkin three. And this is why like string naming for entities is smart because like I'm not really thinking as I'm going through these. I'm just replacing Patricia with Paco. I'm replacing one with three, and the, you're just trusting that the the system works. So okay, let's go see. It'll have that offset issue again, I think. Offset. Uh, pumpkin group three. Say about there ish. That's negative 2.39. Looks right. Let's grab that. Oh, let's see to make sure. Okay, you know what time it is. And if anybody can beat the mod to naming these pumpkins, jump in and do so. Okay, what do we say here? Look at this. This is, this is a troublemaker. Piper? That's cool. You know what's a great Halloween movie to watch? Is uh, They Live. It's just an awesome movie anyway. Like that's, I don't know if I like The Thing or uh, They Live better um, amongst the Carpenter movies. But that's just like, it's not too on the nose of being a Halloween movie, but it's like kind of a horror movie. But, um, oh, it's great. Okay, we um, if we finish early, what made me think of it is the name Piper, because Rowdy Rowdy Piper is the... Uh, is like the wrestler who stars in that movie. Carpenter liked him. I think he might be in another Carpenter movie. Uh, it has the best fight scene in the history of cinema, maybe. Um, there's like this alley fight scene that is meant to be like super uh, kind of pseudo-realistic in that it goes for like 10 minutes or something. 
and it's not um it's like just a struggle it doesn't look like particularly good or cinematic um but it's shot like a cinematic fight scene but it's like it's really cool it's uh one of carpenter's best scenes um i forget the other actor in that scene Okay, Piper, Pumpkin 4 group. Hopefully that's right. I'm less confident in that one than, than I did in the same thing. Okay, control alt I. That looks good to me. So the group needs to be at that number, negative 2.390. Oh, we might make our goal. We might be done by 140 with these. Okay. Uh, and then the uncarved is the other one we need to adjust, right? So. Actually, it's only the axe um, need to change. So we'll do that. Reload. Oof! Why did that not work? Why did that not work? Why did that not work? One of my favorite, thinking of John Carpenter, one of my like favorite weird pop culture things last year was that that um, One Among Us level that is just straight up based on the scenes from The Thing, but they don't make very explicit, re like there's references to it throughout, but like they don't hit you over the head, like they don't call it like The Thing level or something. Yeah, really cool. It's also maybe the best level in that game. The scale is kind of hard, kind of iconic, but. Okay, pumpkin four group. Let's try this again. And uncarved. I don't know why it didn't work the first time. Cool, last one. Okay, this is our jolly pumpkin. What are we thinking? Bad pay. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, thank you for the names. 
add me a pumpkin five group. Pumpkin. Pumpkin five, pumpkin. Oh, speaking of games, this is very deep into a stream to try to shout something out. But I, I just played a bunch of really cool um, games that were made by students here at State. Yeah, I want to show them off in stream quick. This is the VGDC uh, itch page. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's like a, they have like a specific hackathon page made for these games. I'm struggling to find it right now. struggling to find this right now, but um, I'm going to just drop this in the chat. Yeah, Mod beat me to it. Nice. Perfect. Um, yeah, they, they have a bunch of cool uh, new games posted uh, that I'm struggling to find right now for whatever reason, but um, definitely try some. I, there's, uh, I thought every one of them was great. Like uh, Some of them had really um, cool premises even, just that I hadn't thought of in a game. There's one that has... Um, it's a first-person shooter where it's as if you were shooting bullets at a mirror, so everything is behind you, like you're in rear view. Uh, I thought that was really like a weird, cool hackathon game. Um, yeah, not to say that that's any better than the rest of them. I thought they were all excellent. The one that runs out of the browser I thought was super cool. So if anybody's interested in doing the kind of stuff that you're doing hanging out with us today here on stream, Check out the uh, VGDC. They're more skilled makers than I am, for sure. Um, so I got this one uncarved number I got to throw in. Oh, did I just did I just screw up? I think I just screwed up. I think I just. Oh, but I just need to move the group. I had lost the group number. Okay, negative three point four eight. Negative three point four. Oh, nice recording. Yeah, we do. We were like five minutes past our goal, I think, for getting that part of this done. Pretty cool. Uh, let's throw some more stuff in here. So I want to lower the camera a little. Um, so let's bring that down to like one. Cool, and then uh, this is where we we'll want that scene documentation because there's a background. Um, tag, yeah, here we go. Ever use this? Uh, I think we might have used this on stream last time I was streaming. Uh, um, the names are Patricia, Perry, Paco, Piper, and Padme. Oh, we could put their names above them. That'd be cool. Um, uh, I don't know, like. Uh, 
I mean, like, I really like the outdoor lighting at a Haunted Mansion. I think it's just, like, the color scheme is so spooky. And the fact that it look, looks scary when it's out, like, in the Florida sun, and then, like, it's totally different, like, at night. Pretty rad. Um, let's grab one of these images. I just want it for the color palette as well. Ooh, that's a pretty... Uh, I don't know. I don't want to read. <laughs> Hopefully, David should do that. Yeah, that's like the color scheme I'm going for here. So, what do I need? A link or a, I need? I need to download this. Oh, yuck! That's like a really bad file format for this. Uh, I don't want to waste any more time on this. That's actually better. Hey, Disney, don't sue me. I swear I'm just using your colors. Ooh, that's a nice color scheme for this. Okay, so let's make this the background color. It's showing in the editor. Huh. Like, if I use the word black here, hold it. No, it's just not. If you're like a silly syntax thing I'm doing here. Confusion. Got background working here, yeah. Uh, Figure. I wonder what's up with that. stop us um oh 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 it's because there's a sky entity uh let's meet that yep cool got it uh, i guess actually i could no i'm just gonna use the background entity here we go uh, well, yeah, that color scheme we liked. Um, pretty 
cool. Then, what, like a, uh, scary tree kind of guy in here. Very spooky. Uh, shout out to Kylo Pascal, Kilo Pascal. I'm um, gonna throw that into our uh, credit stock. Download this model. FBX is fine. And apologies. Oh, I guess I'll switch back over to Blender and love you. FBX downloads graveyard source mm, I don't have materials for a lot of this oh I don't really want to rematerialize a bunch of this right now um, what could I do what could I do what could I do what could I do, what could I do? Um, I actually I'm really curious what if I like get rid of this, get rid of this. Um, export. Or like if I just go to I'm not doing texturing for all this right now. <laughs> it was kind of ambitious, but I was just like, oh, I'll just throw some BSDFs on there. Uh, I will actually just try exporting it, though, as a GLDF yeah, and see, like, we don't even need texture, maybe. Call it, uh, throw it in that pumpkin folder, say, untextured spook, untextured spooky. Here, what we got like five minutes left. Thanks for hanging out with me today, everybody. This is a, I had a lot of fun uh, making this little scene. Makes me want to go home and carve a pumpkin. Spooky tree. Pumpkins are the best. I love a good cucurbit. Uh, sorry, I'm still looking at Blender, aren't I? Spooky tree.
this does not need to be clickable like the other things did. Scale, I don't know. Let's just go one more one start. Uh, rotation, I don't have a strong feeling on that yet. Position, like, uh, we can figure that out as we go. Okay. It's kind of cool. I'm sort of into that effect of just like completely untextured. Um, I guess I don't know if I can add a, a material to it. I don't think I can. I don't think I can overwrite the um, material. But that's useful. So position minus 12, 0, minus 13 kind of thing. Uh, so let's go like minus 13. Oof, I totally forgot those numbers after I said them. Yeah, you can use the same model like multiple times. Um, so I'm going to throw this uh, x. What do you think, everybody? Is that good for the day? So here's here's your clip of what we made. Ready? Um, today we made within a frame, uh, which is a WebXR standard for the web. We made this spooky Halloween scene, uh, which has some interactivity, where we can reveal our different pumpkins, including Patricia, Padme, uh, Paco. Uh, and other friends. Oh, I'm clicking on the wrong thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I went like maybe three of five to remember the names. Uh, I'll remember them later. But cool. Thanks, everybody. I've had a lot of fun. I hope you have too. Uh, have a safe and spooky weekend. Um, and as always, uh, Feel free to come hang out with us at the NC State Libraries for all of your research, class, instruction, and recreational needs. Um, and we'll see you next week. Be in November before you know it. It's crazy. Okay. Bye, everybody.